Hey, good morning to you. Happy Monday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. The National Weather Service has taken this great shot showing this very large and strong storm all the way down to 945 millibars. But this is our system right here that is coming to our country now, guys, and it is strengthening up, and I have all your totals for you. Now, if you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. I do upload all year long. Make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as that bell. And to those that celebrate, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day to you today. My wife and I, we don't celebrate it because of our beliefs, but I'm not trying to push my beliefs on you. So happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Love is love. <laughs> But well, we did just pass our 11th anniversary and we are just still ecstatic and happy as can be. So I hope you all have a very great Monday today. Let me get to your totals of what you have. Remember, all the links are in the description to help save you time. Now, National Weather Service has put out some alerts already for the system coming in, as well as a hydraulic alert for northern Illinois, because this is where all this rain is going to come before the snowfall. Now, I'm going to go through your updated impacts of what you're going to get from this storm, possibly plus the 95 percentile of what you most likely is going to get from National Weather Service and National Digital Forecast System. It is the best database to get the average, and it's usually in between what the models are fighting about. Now, Washington, you do have a marine hazard risk for Tuesday and Tuesday night, and you can see all this red area is significant, but you just got to be careful of what's coming in with this storm system all the way from northern Washington all the way to southern Washington. And just so you know what you're looking at, all this red here is all significant wind or wind gusts, anywhere from 48 notches, which is close to 55, almost 60 miles per hour, or up to 10 foot waves. Plus, you got 15 foot waves further out. Just be aware. Plus, Montana, you do have an expected snowfall rate coming, and I do have this link in the description for y'all to check it out, and it will update throughout the day. But you can see how some people is getting only one to two inches, but a lot of y'all is getting two to three and a possible three to four. Plus, Nevada, you have winter weather advisories. 7 p.m. Monday all the way to 4 p.m. Tuesday for northern Elko County. 2 to 5 inches above 6,000 feet with winds up to 35 miles per hour. Ruby Mountains, 9 p.m. Monday to 10 p.m. Tuesday. Possible 4 to 8 inches of snowfall with winds up to 35 miles per hour as well. Plus, we already have flash flooding being picked up by National Weather Service all the way from northeast Oklahoma, across northern Arkansas, southern Missouri, and south and southwestern Illinois. This is from Wednesday into Thursday. And they also have y'all out Wednesday into Thursday for severe weather. This is a good chance for tornadoes, guys. 5% area in all this brown and 15% in all this yellow. And here's your cities and your states in the severe weather for Wednesday going into Thursday. The main one, 15%, is Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, Arlington, Texas, Plano, Texas, and Garland, Texas. And as you go Thursday into Friday, it's still showing another day of 15% of severe weather, but they have come all the way down to the northern half of Tennessee, not all the way up to the lower half of the Ohio Valley anymore. But the severe weather risk... Thursday into Friday is Memphis, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Montgomery, Alabama, and Shreveport, Louisiana. Plus, from National Weather Service, all these cold temperatures y'all getting as the storm coming by, it's about to leave, guys. It's about to be a warm-up, so I know it's a little chilly, even cold. All I can say is enjoy it, because you're about to complain because it's about to be hot. Next 6 to 10 days, the average of your temperatures is above average in all this orange to red, even on the west coast, and below average in this blue because this system coming through. But it will change from 8 to 14 days, well above average temperatures on the east coast, while you got the below average on the west coast. Pretty much what we saw a long time ago is coming into fruition now, guys. From National Weather Service for Wednesday going into Thursday, you're going to have snowfall in all this white, mixed precipitation in all this blue, because they're not sure yet what the amounts and where. But I do have your percentiles, guys. While you have thunderstorms right here, a fire risk right here, severe thunderstorms in this yellow, and rain in all this green. Now let's go through what we're showing for impacts. According to the NAM 3K, which we can only see 60 hours, but we can already see that it is bringing damage and winds on that first part of that system as it comes stretching into Canada. And it's showing from Tuesday night and through Wednesday is when all this damage and wind is going to come. And it's going from 40 to 50, even 60 still for Ohio Valley. And we only see 60 hours, but so far it is carrying towards northern Ohio, maybe a little bit more of the intercoastal northeast of western New York, western Pennsylvania. 
but we can't see the snowfall rates because it's just a little bit still too far. But you can see that shot here from National Weather Service. As you go into Wednesday morning, you have the second surface low, and I don't think the Euro is seeing that, and it's always showed two of them, guys. Why you got this heavy snowfall happening, even for Colorado, I will get you your totals as we get a little bit closer, get more accurate with high resolution rapid refresh would be best. But while you're getting this front right here and you're getting the freezing rain, the sleet, the snow, but a lot of rainfall will come first before this cold temperatures come down. Now GFS sees this rainfall as well and is still showing the snowfall. Euro taking the snowfall even further south and the Canadian went even further south. So I believe the GFS track and impact amounts because it is coinciding with what National Weather Service says. And by Thursday morning, it's going to be heavy snowfall and all this dark blue. You got your surface low right down here, strengthening up towards the Ohio Valley and heavy rainfall and all this green. But when you look at a precipitation from NAM 3 k you can see it's going right in the same direction as National Weather Service was predicting. And you can see that here on the National Digital Forecast Database. It's going about the same area, just like I just showed you. And the next shot would be the snow and all that rain. Now, the NAM 4K takes the rainfall starting to go towards the northern half of the Ohio Valley and hardly anything for the upper Midwest, which is a little bit against the angle of what National Weather Service was seeing. National Weather Service sees that high pitch, and then it does drag across, but it drags across the southern Wisconsin. It don't turn so early for the Ohio Valley. I never liked the NAM 4K because it don't have a lot of accurate information. It goes against itself. It's going against what the 3K is showing, and that's the 4K. And that's the path of the snowfall so far for the 4K. But the one thing we can take out of this that's showing in all the weather models is it will be heavy snowfall, major snowfall first. There will be a brief period of light, and then it'll be major again. We just need to get the track. And I have your percentiles according to the National Weather Service. But it's not accurate enough yet, but it is still picking up that there is going to be ice with this system. How much, we still don't know yet. It's still a few days away, guys. And it's picking up freezing rain as well. It's going to be a temperature battle according to all the weather models. It's definitely going to be a lot of freezing rain and a good bit of sleet. So it definitely will be an ice storm that's coming up. As far as major, uh, some is showing it's going to be weak. Some is showing it's going to be a lot. But National Weather Service is seeing this as well, at least a tenth of an inch. Now, you can't see that far with 3K, but you can see with the 4K where the low pressure is going. It's going from Oklahoma all the way towards northern Arkansas, north, northern Illinois, and staying on that low track and not high up. But the GFS takes it all the way up in, in 84 hours, and it's going to be on that northern track and not on that southern track. Still the same outcomes pretty much. And the Euro takes it where it's still way southern, way weaker. First it took it faster, now it's taking it slower, well northern track, and just a lot of freezing rain for a lot of people, as well as snowfall. Ohio Valley getting the worst of it. A lot of heavy snowfall, especially for Thursday afternoon, and heavy freezing rain for Thursday afternoon. As far as accuracy, it's still too far to be sure, guys. But I'm going to show you percentiles according to National Weather Service, so you can see how these models are bouncing around, and you can see the most likely outcome. Now, GFS is still on that 10 to a foot plus all the way across from northern Missouri all the way towards Michigan and Canada with very much heavy snowfall. Still on that track. And the latest Euro took it three to five inches straight across. And then when I waited for the update, that's why I waited a little bit. It does show heaviness first, then weakening, just like we've been seeing in the pattern. There will be heaviness first, then weakening, then heaviness again. But it's still catching up. It's still showing more and more impacts. But it is showing the same track, so we can take a note of that. But when we go through the ensembles, you can see the heaviness starting to appear in a lot of the models, guys. Plus, when you look at your control member, you can see how it just takes a high ridge turn towards Wisconsin with all that major snowfall instead of going straight across like the Euro is showing. And it's always showed a high ridge from the 16th to the 17th. Here's a little closer shot so you can see it come through Missouri, through Illinois, eastern Iowa. Now you can see it takes that high ridge to the north just like it's been shown in all the teleconnections. Even a bunch of these show that it will go straight and then whoop up to the north because it's going to go up on a higher ridge. And this being your average, that would be eastern and northern Missouri, eastern Iowa, northern Illinois, and southern Wisconsin. And when you look at the North Atlantic Oscillation according to the Euro, you can see as it goes from the 15th to the 16th, still showing it's a lazy ridge. But once it goes from the 16th to the 17th, it goes up on a high ridge and it pulls more northern. That's why I believe the GFS. 
It's not going more into a trough like the Euro and the Canadian is showing or even a long lazy ridge. It's going into a higher ridge where it's going to go even more pull to the north. And you can see this as well on a GFS. This has been trending for a long time. As you go from the 15th to the 16th, it's kind of a lazy ridge. But once you go from the 16th to the 17th, it jumps to a very high ridge. And that would bring that northern pull, guys. That's why I believe the GFS. Tell me who you believe. Now, the GFS always has been and still seeing all this freezing rain that's coming out of this system all the way across Michigan into Canada. Heavy freezing rain, heavy snowfall. The sleet has lightened up a little bit. Now, the Euro has started to spread it out a little bit more. Last time it showed just a couple of spots, but it is starting to spread out where it's going to be heavy freezing rain more than ice. It's going to be more freezing rain and snow than ice, and according to a lot of these models, guys. But it is showing that it will be freezing rain a little lower because it's taking that lower track. But remember, the teleconnection says it's going to go up on a high ridge from the 16th to the 17th. So if that system can get over from the 15th to the 16th, a little further east, before it goes up on a higher ridge, that would bring this outcome. Plus the rainfall with the GFS is still bringing two inches wide spread all the way from Northern Oklahoma, all the way across towards Michigan still. And it's been showing that for a long time. And that's gonna be a lot of snowfall with that. And it is picking some rainfall up for the Southeast. It's central Alabama, central to Northern Georgia, upstate South Carolina, not a whole bunch, but it's about the same area that National Weather Service is picking up. Big band up North, then you got a little bit down south. It just showed a little bit more to the north and east on National Weather Service. But you can see how the sleet and the ice has lightened up greatly according to the GFS. It's showing it still from Michigan. So it will be a lot of training of precipitation in that one area. Is the way, that's the way it's looking so far with the freezing rain as well. And a heavy snowfall on top of that. Now the Euro is still showing two inches of rainfall. It just takes it more southern all the way into the Ohio Valley and nothing for Northern Illinois, Eastern Ohio or Southern Wisconsin, not even a whole bunch for Michigan or Canada. Now the previous run from the Euro does show this heavy precipitation coming and that next one coming on Friday for the South as well, one to two inches. And you can see an updated run that is showing still two inches across the Ohio Valley. So it's there's a difference between the two models before it showed the same spot. Now it's showing a little bit more further south. So Euro is trending more and more south. But definitely very much light glaze of sleet. Not a whole bunch for anybody according to the Euro. And the Euro takes it all the way where it's just light. One heavy spot for Indiana. That's about it. But if you go to the last 90 hours, this is what the Euro sees. And our latest update is even less. Now we've got to talk about these winds. Because is this showing up not only for NAND 3K? GFS is still picking up. And that brown from Mexico, that's all 70. But according to the latest run from GFS, it's still showing like NAM 3K, 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts. It's showing the 60 is lower. NAM 3K took that a little bit more northern. But it's showing a lot of damage in wind, guys. But it's showing high 60s, especially for the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley as it goes towards the northeast. It's still showing high 60s for the northeast as well, but it's strengthening. Yesterday it showed 70s along the coast all the way to Maryland and Delaware. And now the 80s are starting to stretch down as well offshore, but they are stretching down. And the Euro is starting to pick up on some winds as well. It's starting to pick up some 50s and 60s from Mexico, western Texas, southern New Mexico. This is exactly what GFS saw a couple of days ago. But it is starting to strengthen up with the Euro, starting to catch up with some of these winds. But when you look at an AM 3K, it's confirming what the GFS is showing, that it will be 50 to 60 miles per hour wind gusts in the Ohio Valley. GFS takes it a little bit further south, more like southern Ohio Valley, Tennessee, Kentucky Valley. Dan 3K shows it's going to be northern Ohio Valley. Now I have this link in the description for you as well. This is from National Weather Service, your best outcome that you can get guys, the smartest guys they have in the weather, weather community, and they are the only real meteorologists I know. But your 72-hour snowfall accumulation at your 95th percentile is all this area right here, just like you've been seeing with the GFS on the precipitation. So according to National Weather Service, all this light green is all one inch. As you get to this darker green, this is all two inches. This very dark green right here is at least four inches of snowfall. Then you got six to eight inches in this section right here from Michigan, which goes with GFS and not the Euro. 
Plus, I have this link in the description for you as well for National Weather Service because these models are bouncing all over the place. At least two inches of snowfall rates. Here's your percentages of your chances of getting at least two inches. As you go from two inches to four inches, you can see where it all goes with the heaviness of the snowfall. Southern Wisconsin, Northern Illinois, Northern Michigan. This is according to National Weather Service. Where we're getting eight inches, not much, but you can see it's going towards the same area, Northern Michigan. This would be all down here if Euro was correct. And according to National Weather Service, who's going to be seeing freezing rain out of this? You can see this is your 95th percentile best chance from the meteorologist at National Weather Service of who's going to be getting freezing rain. And you have up to a tenth of an inch of ice for all this dark green right here for southeastern Ohio, northern Missouri, and northern Illinois as well. This is the hot spot according to National Weather Service. And here's our probability page so you can see who will most likely get a tenth of an inch. It's showing mostly it's going to be northern Missouri and southwestern Illinois is most likely going to be getting that tenth of an inch of ice. And you only have a 1 to 5% chance of a quarter inch of ice. So they are most likely seeing that you have a chance for a tenth of an inch. And in this green is 30 to 40% chance of a tenth of an inch. Well, thank you all again for visiting my channel today. I hope you have a very blessed Monday out there. My kids aren't in school because their school's celebrating this holiday as well. So if you're not in school, have a very <laughs> great and fun day. If you're going to work, have the best day possible. I wish the best for every single one of you. And I have this on Vorticity so y'all can see the storm coming as well as the next one after. If you saw yesterday's video, you know we're going to have this two or three more times for the rest of this month. It's going to be a repeat pattern but warmer temperatures coming, so that's going to be even more severe weather. I will show you that and go through your tornado threat as we get a little bit closer. I really don't want to believe Euro or GFS on your severe weather at this point. Psalm 62. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you. As a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. Selah. My soul. Wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God has spoken once, twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy, for thou renderest to every man according to his work. Amen. And for those that don't know, Selah means think about what you just heard. It is so true. <laughs> Have a very great day today, guys. Thank you for your time. I hope this information has helped you understand a little bit more of what's going on. <laughs> and all power. All glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father, our God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a very great day. I'll see you in the morning.